Um, hello, welcome to the Unsworn Gamer. <laughs> I'm your host, Roberto. Uh, it's the Interesting One Monday Show. I'm joined by James. Hello, James. How are you? Hey, up. Uh, pretty good, thank you. Pretty Currently good. panicking. Currently panicking about the poll that he's running in the chat. <laughs> it came up before and it was like 124,000. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of numbers. Not, Someone not used to... a lot of things <laughs> to beat me down. Oh, no, so, no, no, no. So, what you're doing, you've done a. It doesn't matter. Dan, how are you? Just a prediction. Anyway, I'm I'm great. I'm I'm Donerto, and I'm, uh, I'm here to just have a wonderful time and talk about bubbly war dollies. Perfect. Perfect. Me too. We're going to be talking about the Caradron overlords today uh, and uh, their place in the world. Dan had suggested, and it was a great thing, we're going to pump that for a couple of weeks in the future. Uh, in fact, actually, I won't say. Otherwise, we'll end up getting pipped to the post on our own content by other people. We're doing yeah, something else will, in the future. Someone who watches the show will be like, that's a great idea. And then just like, bang. I'll do that as a video. Uh, so we'll, we'll do that in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, so we're going to talk about Caradron Overlords today because we kind of in this interesting place with Caradron Overlords. Uh, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, James, have you done any hobby yeah. this week, babe? Uh, what have I done? No. Uh, I played some Blood Bowl last week. That hobby? Yes, you that are a keen fan of the Blood Bowl. I am currently, but it's more the people I'm playing with than the game, I think. Like, the game's funny. But I feel like it's one of those games that if I played it with anyone that knew what they were doing, I would lose badly. Whereas instead, I played a game where we started with 11 players aside. And when we started the second half, I had six players and Reese had four. Perfect. And it was a very fast second half. And we played in a pub, so that was nice. Which uh, so I... uh, which uh, team are you? I'm playing uh, Imperial Nobility. <laughs> you fucking oh, Tory, you Tory wow. bitch. <laughs> Jesus, look at him. Basically, the tax windows basically Bretonians. You, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, Bretonians. Okay, all right, Basically, fine. I'm not sure. I'm not sure everyone's keen. What was Reese playing? Who can we root for? Uh, goblins. All right. Well, we're on Reese's teammates. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. But I've decided that if we do a second league, I want to play halflings just because they're fun. Oh, That's halfling, the correct like, decision. Everyone's always on halflings. Like if you choose halflings, everyone supports you because you're you're actively bad, but it's fun to watch you. Yeah, I also really want the guy on the go just because why not? <laughs> Apparently, the pie lady who throws pies in is broken. Her foot, though. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> what? This? What's the it's context It's not good, of is that? it? Oh, it's, it's not, not good. good. You're the no, other side. That model is ugly. James, what's your sort of favourite sort of foot? Not that one. Okay, good answer. Good answer. You got round that. That was good. I not thought I trapped that you, one. but you, you got out. <laughs> Uh, all right, good. Um, Blood Bowl fun. Are you going to play more seriously? Also, have you heard about the launch of Blood Bowl 3? Because apparently it's a fucking disaster. I, do you know, like, um, so me and Meg played Blood Bowl 2 in lockdown, which is what got me into it because mm. it was just a laugh. Like, we sit next to each other anyway, and that gives you, like, a percentage chance on Blood Bowl 2. And Meg would be like, oh, I've got 94%. I'll go past me. And my player would trip her over. And then she'd be like, I'll re-roll that. And she'd still get tripped over. Oh, that's great. And then yeah. I'd be like, oh, I've got 2%. But whatever, it's a goal. So I click go for it. And I'd make it every time. And it was just hilarious. Like, I cry laughed my way through most of the games, watching Meg foul 94% and me pass 2%. Like, yeah. best. So when I saw they were releasing Blood Bowl 3, I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, maybe we'll buy that. And then I looked again and I was like, but I don't need it to look good. Like, like I don't think Blood Bowl is a game that has to look mm. new. Because it uh, kind of looks decent anyway. I mean, Blood Bowl 2 looked great. When I watched it, when I saw it, I was like, this looks brilliant. Yeah. And, and also, like, all the teams are on there pretty much. And they're all pretty cheap. So, my flip was that when I looked, I was like, well, do I want to buy a whole new game? with not all the teams on that's kind of the same so i uh, i didn't bother but i kind of followed it on on um online to be fair um and it looks like the launch was bad and i saw it some was. person about two days before that had beta access that i think would have been like a streamer or whatever who said i have refunded oh they must know they must have bought it they were like i 
bought it. I got the 40 hour release. I played for two hours or whatever the Steam cutoff is, and I refunded it before because the game is that bad. And I thought, this will be a mess. Yeah, apparently the microtransactions was... are nuts. Yeah, microtransactions all over the like I I so I I'm still playing the original Blood Bowl Chaos uh, like Chaos Edition because it's got all the teams, it's got all the rules, it's literally like that's all I need, and I'm adoring it. Uh, and but Blood Bowl two for sure, like if I I felt inclined, I'd jump on it. I think I think Blood Bowl three would be great, but tons of microtransactions, poorly optimized. Like it was, I was just. Uh, looking at some reviews because I was tempted to dive in uh, and it's just been crashing apparently for a lot of people. There's been a patch that's probably stabilized it a little bit, but it doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence when a, a game releases and like bef- the day one patch doesn't fit stabilize the game before it's out. It's it's interesting too though, right? Because both Dark Tide I thought was pretty cheap. And Blood Bowl three, if you look at like the mm. cost of that as a game, pretty cheap. Mm. <laughs> like compared to other games. Mm. And then you go, I... oh, but they're also trying to sell me sixty four pounds worth of stuff so I can play the game. Yeah, I'll, then, I'll be interested to see cheap. where they go. Yeah. So, well, messy. I mean, I the see other than Total War, I'm not sure I'll ever play computer games again. Like maybe The Last of Us at some point when I'm ready emotionally to play through it. Don't. Oh, Great don't. Game. It's no, just, don't. It's just going to hurt you. Yeah, I know. It's just going like, to... Play, I you... played one and two before. I don't want to be that I played them before the TV series, but I played one and two, loved them, quoted them as my favorite games for a very long time. Um, so it's either... Uh, but it doesn't matter, Dan, because this is a side note. I'm sorry, because we're talking about computer games, because it's all over. Because this year, Sukaden is being remastered for the Switch and PlayStation. And so me and James are just going to quit and become Sukaden streamers to eight <laughs> other people. Yeah. And the Uden Chronicles. <laughs> or, yeah, there's no, no, no. There's, but they're remastering Sukaden and Uden Chronicles is out this yeah, year. Yeah, so both. So it's all I've, over. I'd, I have no idea but what those are, but I, there is apparently a remaster rework of Knights of the Old Republic coming. And if that comes out, then I'm just, I'm going to disappear off the face of the earth. You'll never see nice. me again. That'll be it. That's we can all just nice. stream those. Yeah, let's Revening my shit yeah, up. I'm in, I'm in. Okay. But Dan, uh, I haven't even asked you how you are. How have you been? You done any hobby? Good. Uh, yeah, I've been, uh, been hobbying, painted up a bunch of terrain, uh, still just working my way through minis. It's good fun. I'm loving it. It's great. It's it's the joy of spending so much time on Zoom meetings is, is that like when I'm only from the nips up, no one knows what I'm doing with my hands, which usually would be a dirty what? statement. But in this, I'm just painting the crap out of dwarves, uh, and it looks like I'm taking notes on what things people are saying. All I have to do on these Zoom meetings, which uh, podcasters won't get, but anyone watching this uh, the video, uh, is like I'm like down, and then I just like look up at the camera, and then nod a little bit, and then go back down to painting, and just it works a treat. Really hope none of my employers watch this or ever see this. Uh, <laughs> But other than that, we're good. Uh, there's, there's some key facts for, for other people who do it at home. Like, just look up, nod, and then go, like, pretend you're going to say something. Go, like, ah, it's okay. Do you know what you, know, you like, need? It's great. That, that creepy new NVIDIA thing. Have you seen it? Has no. anyone seen it? Rob, no. you probably want it, too. No, tell me have about you... it. Why? Tell me oh, about do it. do tell you about it. Yeah, yeah. So NVIDIA have made this crazy software, right? So I'm on webcam. Yeah. I think it's called Maxine but it's part of like a bigger package. Yeah. But so I'm on camera and I can be looking here, but, and my eyes will always focus on the camera. What? Oh. So I look down here and I'm painting, but my eyes always look straight into my camera. So it's like a filter. Well, so you'd no, be no, like... well I guess it's AI. So it AI generates your eyes and makes them always look at the camera. I'm so scared. Cause what, what, how, like, cause, cause there's a couple of futures in the future right and and the, and the most the most fucked one the one that's the most danger to all of us is ai learns to be like nathan nice <laughs> <laughs> that'd be good you... though right think how many nathans we could have imagine pa- nathan with the power of the whole internet at his hands amazing everything would be a goblin <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want. All oh, Nathan, all the time. Do we? We ask you a question. Yeah. You were like, I need help. And they were like, well, you're fucked. That's what it would say. I, you know, like all that, that AI art stuff that was coming out. Uh, like, there's just a Nathan version of that. And you put in what you want. And then it's like, oh, yeah. Um, 
I did it, but then it's a bit different from what you asked, uh, but it's better. So there. And yeah. like, you're just like, this is just a picture of a goblin. I wanted like a, a beautiful sunrise. And he's like, in a way, it is a beautiful sunrise. Just take it and fuck off. <laughs> just take it and fuck off, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, for hobby for me, um, as this is my one chance to talk about it, uh, I am in the process of building three armies, stupidly. Um, I'm doing uh, Ogres, uh, Lumineth, uh, but these are all 3D prints, just, uh, just to be super clear. Uh, mm -hmm. And also um, uh, some goblins. Well, I've done trolls, uh, but I was adding some uh, squigs to it um, uh, for reasons that no one needs to know about. Um, and now I'm very interested in fire slayers, interestedly, at the moment. Building, mm. yeah. Um, what kind of ogres? Uh, they're actually yeah, ogres that was from. Be my question. Uh, they're from Claybee's Creation. So, uh, so out not. I don't know if he's watching right now. Um, is a creator for Claybee's Creation. He sent us be some early access files to the ogre STLs, and I'm going to make a video of me like producing like an army of. So he has. He's only at the minute. He hasn't got like iron guts. So he's got a butcher. He's got uh, two hand weapon ogres like like um, uh, gluttons. Uh, yep. weapon and iron fist gluttons and then lead belchers and um, but they have big crossbows which is super cool and then he's got, got like a, an iron blast iron blaster kind of like proxy um, so like what, that's no not... scrap launcher proxy for all those scrap not... launcher people that want to take scrap launchers <laughs> That's where they are. They're in the scrap. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, like I'm waiting for the Iron Guts to come out. And obviously, he's got, like, Iron Guts, Stonehorn, Mournfang, and other stuff to kind of approach. But, like, I'm really looking forward to... I kind of, I'm kind of interested in... Like, I kind of want to make a video of it. But I think what I'll do is I'll make a video of making, like, a 1,000 points. Because I don't really mm -hmm. want to make 2,000 points of just, like, basic gluttons. Uh, because if I was going to print a lot of anything, it'd probably want to be Iron Guts. Not because they're even that good. I just think that they're beefy. I just want some yeah. beefy lads. Uh, so, yeah, I haven't actually... And then I ended up having a super busy weekend, so I didn't even get around to doing any painting, which kind of broke my heart. Because I just... You know when you get in the mood and you're like, I just want to paint today. Um, and I mm. haven't got to do that for a little bit, so I kind of want to get back on. I think that the hard thing for me is when I want to get painting uh, is removing the rest of my body. That's the the really the tricky bit is because, you know, you sit down, you just get all your stuff hands. together, and then you have to chop off your hands. That's the bit I struggle with. It's, it's the really part. tough. It's the hardest, it's the hardest part. part. The yeah. hardest part. The hardest part is never having your face on stream. We should have just done a show like this. That would have been fun. That's oh shit. We should have had all the cameras pointing down and done the whole thing just <laughs> no, talking I could have hands. Just put like, my oh. camera all the way up, and you could have just seen the top of my head for the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. It would have been perfect. All right, I, good. See, I, I the thing I find that triggers me about only hands is that I have a problem. Like I've got a broken fucking finger that hasn't healed right, so I have what? a hand that just doesn't work. Um, and and like a, a with a bit that doesn't work so like i'm 10 percent busted hand and so it just seems really handest um to uh, to you know focus on them so because this is fun james i can just answer your question live do we have the ko crap <laughs> <laughs> was the question do we have the ko crap uh yes it's available on wahapedia james oh uh, okay excellent okay just, just like everything just Already, like, they, that boy's fast. Very fast. Right, okay, let's Someone jump into it. Someone should give him a raise. <laughs> he has. So listen, um, we're going to talk about the Carriage and Overlords, and this is kind of what I was going to get at. Carriage and Overlords um, is obviously on pre-order. So it's on pre-order this weekend, which means all of the NDA people have got their access to it and will be able to, on Saturday, watch a bunch of videos. There is kind of an interesting point at the minute, Dan uh, and James, that last time they didn't put everything out and it seemed, and this was across mm. all of the content creators. So um, we're not sure if there's like a kind of new deal that they've got with GW, where um, uh, like they can't show the War Scrolls. So the last time it was all of the rules, mm. but none of the War Scrolls. Mm. So it might be next time that they, uh, it might be, it, there might be the same thing that we won't see any of the War Scrolls. Uh, at the weekend, which is kind of interesting because then you you kind of get most of the information, but all of the information. And I think, I don't know if that's more hype or less hype. I'm not sure. But either way, that's this weekend. And Dan, as you rightly pointed out, um, there's all the mercenary stuff. But obviously, we don't know what any of this is. So what's fun is let's just wish list a little bit. Let's talk about some of the units. Let's talk about some of the armies. Mm. Uh, some, some of the units, sorry. Talk about some of the bits. Just have a good old wish list because that's always super fun. There are rumors 
already out there in the wild, but we're not really sure about the rumours. So no point kind of giving them life at the moment. Um, if I thought they were real, then we'd talk about them. Uh, so yeah, we should we should talk about the KO. If yeah. you guys are keen... Um, the, can we can we start with... I have a question. Yeah. When did the last KO battle tome get released? Uh, I can tell you when, and James will be able to help I don't you out think as it well. Was... It was I don't when think it was that James, long ago, was it? Me and James had to do the longest podcast of all time. Is when it was. Oh no, I think I think there was one. I think there was there's one. one since that. One, hasn't there no, there one, hasn't like, been one the since then. There hasn't months? been one since then. No? It's super old. It's super old. It's super fucked up. Oh, here it, we go. I have found a list. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so first edition KO mm-hmm. was 2017. So that's no use to me, is it? 2020. Uh huh. So three last years ago. KO. Uh, doesn't give me a month. That's not very useful, is it? I think it was early. Mm. I think it was early. Oh, January 4th. Well done. There we go. Thank you. 2020. Thank you. Thank you. Pre-COVID. Yeah. When we sat in the old studio and listened to Nathan read the book from one page to the last page for 400 <laughs> hours. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was a long time. So, okay, I think that's kind of, should we kind of recap people? Because some people might not even know what KO are, right? Which is kind of like a yeah. fair, I think it's a fair and assumption. And maybe a, a super quick hit list of, because I remember, remember everyone, the first book came out and Ironclad's filled with everything, deploying off the table and then like deploying on and nuking stuff like that was the start of KO and KO had this awful like couple of two months where it dominated uh, all of the competitive meta when that book first dropped. Uh, and so maybe to, to do it, we'll do a quick flick through of what it's been. Um, oh, what on, on how the, yeah, the book landed with kind of like the book was an awkward book. If, and please don't go back and watch the review of the book. The last one. Um, because... You should, it'll be funny. <laughs> Hours long. ADP's favourite podcast. Hours, Do you know you this? Just... What? I got a message from Aaron Dembski Bowden, not to out him, but ADB messaged me and he was like, "That was my favourite podcast you've ever done." And I was like, "That's embarrassing for us." It was just man who reads book. <laughs> but Nathan. But Nathan. But Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> uh... So wait, can I do a super quick wrap up of the very first book that released in 2017? Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah. Super quick wrap up. Okay, it released and a bunch of people were like, ooh, they were new, so nobody had really gotten onto them and the rules weren't specific. So what everybody did was filled an ironclad with uh, units. They'd deploy one small unit on the table, put everything else in the ironclad and then give their opponent the first turn because the, the you could do that with your battalions. Your opponent had nothing to do turn one. Turn two, they'd drop the ironclad and absolutely go freaking ham with a ton of shots into all of the juiciest parts of your opponent's army. Uh, And then they'd usually take off about a 1,000 points in that shooting. And if they won priority, they won the game because they took the other 1,000 points off. If they lost priority, uh, then you had sort of a game, but you had one army with 2,000 points on the board and one army with 1,000 points on the board. When they originally released pre being like the only first unit that got FAQ'd in the General's Handbook too, right? Because you could originally Mm -hmm. build the special weapon unit, Thunderers, I'm going to say, all with grenades. So there was loads of Thunderers in the world, but no grenade launchers. That's what I remember. This was the second thing after that. That was the second edition. That was the second book. That was the second book. The, the second oh, thing it? after that, though, was... No, this was, was still in the first. Oh, yeah, was first, then yeah. they were taking th- Grunstock... So Grunstock Thunderers had two weapons that were particularly desirable, a big fuck-off cannon that was short-range and a long-range mortar. And you had a dude who could buff a unit to give it plus one to a certain type of attack characteristic that oh, yes. stacked. So people were just stacking the shit out of it and giving five dudes, like, like. 20 shots then people realized that wasn't exactly practical so that went away and they gave battle line sky hooks which were basically long range cannons with a spike on the end and they'd buff they'd have a unit of 30 of them with nine sky hooks and they'd buff it three times so they'd be shooting like 27 shots uh and then and then that went away because games workshop uh did a, a thing where they were like you can only take one per kit so for every 10 you can only have one special weapon rather than three of the same so you had these like 
two kind of army archetypes that came out in rapid succession and then were FAQ'd out of oblivion. But for the very short month or two before they were FAQ'd, they dominated the competitive meta and were fucking miserable to play against. And you saw a lot of Stormcast armies ally in exactly 30 uh, Arcanauts with uh, Skypikes, uh, or the, the shooty Skyhooks, and a Chemist, so that they could go, yeah, sweet, here we go, 18 shots, 18 shots, 18 yeah, shots was, with these was, brutal things. Yeah, it was, they're basically, the, their weapon profile was basically sharks, uh, mm-hmm. like, because it was like D3 mortal wounds, pretty crazy range as well. Yeah, that original list as well was called the Clown Car. We got mm-hmm. a mean name for it, the Clown Car, the KO Clown Car. Um, a meme and, name for a mean list. Yeah, and, thank and, and, God, and as a look, as a dwarf, uh, uh, you know, a staunch dwarf supporter, I'm glad that both of those lists no longer fucking exist. Because as somebody who played against them multiple times, they were miserable. They required very little strategy from the player operating them, and you were just a, a you're a piece of shit if you took them. So uh, that's great. Yes, and that that was book one. That was book one in a, in a nutshell in in five minutes. And then book two was we got the new kid to write the book, kind of <clears> take <throat> the stuff from like book two. Book two was is the new Skaven book, like where there it's basically it was an old edition book, so it's effectively book one with some extra bits a bit, but not mm. really. And everything was really the same, and you, everything could like re-roll a one or something yeah. nonsense. And then they were like, right, also, it's all based off Triumphs. You've got this stuff. And we're like, okay, yeah. cool. Have you ever FAQ Triumphs? And they were like, no, we fucking haven't. And you were like, right, okay, this is a problem. <laughs> yeah, like, um, and then, yeah, it was it was incredibly clunky. It's one of the worst books, I think, to read right. There's a there's a dedicated podcast called The Aethercast, um, who are like, mm. they're, just, they're just the KO bros. That's all they make content on. So if you're mm. a KO fan, go check that out. Uh, but it was just wildly clunky and uh, gross. And reading it was like legitimately a chore. It wasn't fun. It wasn't engaging. And like, and all you could really do is kind of restack the same stuff on each other all the time, which is why mm. all we've had over the past three years uh, since our book got released is the same list all the time. And Ironclad is vital. And I don't mm-hmm. know. It's quite a small roster, so you kind of want, always want an Ironclad. Um, an Ironclad is always in there. You would always just take the spell in a bottle, which became the thing. You can just mm-hmm. find, insert broken endless spell, stick it in a bottle, and then drop down turn one, release the bottle, um, and then yep. like just maybe win, maybe don't. Uh, and that's kind of where KO have been for three years, which has been really which... sad for the KO players. And the Arcanautist uh, points out really clear, like properly in the chat as well. It was very reliant on that. Like all of the stuff was clunky and and weird and specific, and it really relied on the second edition rules, like the the Age of Sigma rules for that edition. And now in this new edition, you know, like you get books that are written with the few, fu- like that are future proofed. This really wasn't that. And like the even with FAQs, it's still like it's a bit of a, like it's a bit of a mess to be honest. The book but- didn't translate to the new edition well. But that's quite interesting because the story that that tells is actually pretty wild because a mm-hmm. load of people in the chat are making a very, very good point that this is an army and this is a book that for a very long time, and, and I really want to get into the who they are, not really what they are, because they've got an amazing background, which is rad. Like, But for a long time, they've been this insanely difficult army to balance because mm-hmm. everything's got a fucking gun. The main mm-hmm. models they want to sell you are just big gun platforms. Mm-hmm. And you couldn't really have, you know, a frigate do the same kind of output as, like, I don't know, Stonehorn or something. It's like, what the fuck? So, like, yeah. so it's kind of, it has to be a gun platform based on how it looks. So you end up with this whole gun army. And then they did that once and it was awful and everyone hated playing against it. And then mm. they did, like, a clunky other version. And it's just been a clunky version held up by one fucking artifact. But, and, and yeah, and now we're here. what I'd what I'd say though, in a des, from a design point of view though, mm. is that the sculpts, like so, uh, like you say, everything has a gun. But you look at Arcanauts; every one of them has a pistol and a sword, or a or a fucking hammer, or like a, a some kind of pick. Their pistols are better than their combat, and they don't have good armor. So why 
on God's green earth would you rely on them to do combat? You know, like, it's not like they gave him a shitty little, like, offhand pistol, like they're a bunch of pirates and they're actually decent swashbucklers. They're shitty at swashbuckling, so of course they're going to shoot. You also then, like, uh, Arkanauts have sculpted a special weapon that is like the pike, like a, a long, stabby, big-ass spear that they made shitty compared to the shooting options. So why would you take the combat option? And then finally, when you look at, like, Endron Riggers versus Sky Wardens, for those who don't know, and we'll go into them shortly, they're the two bubble boys that float around and fly. You had Endron Riggers that were pretty good shooty and had one super powerful combat attack. And then you had Sky Wardens that were supposed to be the combat punch, or like the, the protectors in combat of the Caradron Overlords. And their spear, their big fucking super spear, was shit in comparison to the Endron Riggers' Aethermatic Saw. <laughs> So why would you take them? So basically at every point in time when it's like these guys have modeled spectacular combat weapons and we've put into the law that they are the frontline infantry that fights, they do the hand-to-hand -hand combat, their weapons were shit. So why would you take them? They yeah. literally, like, as much as it's like they recognized it was a negative play experience, they didn't make combat especially appealing to a player in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, the point being made in the chat, um, which I think Lindry is making, is if they give us incentive to be in combat, they can fix a lot of the issues. I think the, the mm. whole point is, is KO gets sold. Like whenever we talk about the problem, in quotation mm. marks, of KO, is it being a gun army? It's like, just make them not a gun army then. Like, like Arkanauts are fully armored in metal and they're dwarfs. Mm -hmm. You could comfortably give them a three-up armor save and give them, like, I don't know, two attacks each, three threes, rend one, make them more tech guard or something, yeah? And you're like, cool, now you've got a unit that holds objectives. That's their job. They're also... They're also on 32 millimeter bases and are the same size as Fire Slayers. Now, I'm not saying they should be two wounds and as durable as them, but it seems odd that you've got these dudes who are like, what are we? We're sky pirates that operate at high altitude. And then it's like, oh, sweet. And what are these guys? Naked dudes who run at the ground. You're like, but we're not anywhere near as tough as them. Yeah. Uh, but, but, I, but also, they're in full play now. Yeah. So yes. like, there is, there is armored as a storm cast. And, and they're and a dwarf. I, but generally on a four up save. Yeah. And before we get into predictions, can I put like, because this sort of leads it, like I'm, a, I'm obviously a, a, a dwarf stand for life. Uh, and so KO have probably been my biggest disappointment um, because I want them to be the best uh, that it was, like no one ever was. Um, but it's that they never have a combat option. And there is, uh, there's two specific, well, there's three really specific sub factions in them that are always talking about. The first is Barak Tring, uh, which is like the city of the ancestors. They're very traditional. They still believe in the old dwarf gods, uh, and they have lots of ties to the dispossessed and the fire slayers. You've got uh, Barak Morna, which are like fucking pirates and murderers and stealthy that would like sneak up and stab you in the back. The cool guys. And now the big. Yeah, the cool guys. And now the <laughs> biggest one that I have always wanted to be good, which is Barak Zon. And they call them the City of the First Sunrise, and they are specifically supposed to be the combat city. They relish in combat. It talks about how they often eschew firearms to, to do things in, like, hand-to-hand. -hand. Like, they'd rather do boarding actions than shoot from a distance. And then what happens is, in the rules for that, they're like, yes, the City of the First Sunrise, they attack from the sun to blind their enemies so that they can close on them without getting shot. And it's like, what do they get rules-wise? And it's like... Oh, they get to re-roll uh, the dice when they charge, if they charge out of a boat. <laughs> and you're like, oh, so if they're nine inches away, they get a re-rollable charge. And like, if, if they got out of a boat that deployed from the sky that turn. And you're like, cool, but anything that makes them better in combat? Oh, no, they're still shit in combat, but they get there better to die. Exactly. Uh, and so that, for me, is the, if we're talking about overall things i would love them to have a combat option and i want it to at least give barrack zone some options well we'll come back to that but i think you're right like arc like arc, like like kind of the <laughs> the the view from the top because <laughs> they're in big boats in the sky is yeah like is that they've been like an insular shooting army um mm. but they and they've never given them the option to do fighting and that's been really sad you've even seen people mm. ally in fighting dwarfs into the army to hopefully yep. get them to get them in which is just weird um so yeah like i think that's that's super good james you ever played against ko have you ever been interested in ko um i have played against them several times over their various like 
factions. When they first came out, I was always a dwarf player in fantasy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was kind of interested because I think they were the first like dwarf faction that I thought I could be excited by. Then I realized they were all guns and a couple of boats, and I was out. Um, I don't think they're probably like I don't dislike their aesthetic, but I don't think it was an aesthetic I'd have chosen to paint. And then I think like when they released and their play style was like enough to put me off. And I think Fire Slayers and these always had the same issue for me where I like old fantasy dwarves. These are less to my taste, although I understand why people like them. But I also think both ranges also suffered because they got like seven models each you, and most of them were heroes i mean that's the other kind of uh like thing that's like been pretty rough in age of sigma 3 is we've gone through this process of getting wildly limited releases they're like hey we're retouching on three years later we're retouching on your favorite army carriage and overlord you're like oh my god amazing what have we got we're like a foot hero and you're like, <laughs> cool. You're like, cool. Well, I was, what, rule, I was... what rules are you changing? And they're like, oh, we're just basically rolling the FAQs that we've released into the book. <laughs> well, we like, don't so... know that yet. We don't know that yet. So, no, no, but I'm saying on previous things, like we've seen that. It's not like they, they reinvented the wheel or did anything massively different with some books. They were just like, yeah, we just we did what uh, what everyone was already doing. Yeah, like, oh, and that's been that's been one of the weak bits of Age of Sigmar three is that actually the model releases have been pretty thin, and every time they've touched a new a, a faction or they've revisited a faction, you're like, okay, this is pretty rubbish, um, because they've got a lot of heroes in their roster, but not a lot. Mm. They could have definitely done with some more well, units. There is sixteen models for sale. Sixteen sets. If you go, yeah, sixteen sets. Sorry, yeah. mm. two are the same set that is multi part. Yeah. One is an Underworlds warband, and one is a character from a book, I imagine. Yes, Derek Flint. Says, Drecky Flint, yes, sorry. That's Drecky the guy. Flint, so, baby. So if we remove two, technically, because they're not actually direct Age of Sigma models, I guess. Mm. So what's that drop you to 14, which drops you to 13 if you count the multi-part kit. If you want to throw back in the Warcry warband, no. Whatever it's called, warband, it puts you back to 14. And I know, like, having been a Skaven player, like, when that release dropped, we got kind of like a cup and copy book. But it's really interesting to look at this and be like, cool, whatever battle term you buy, the maximum amount of War Scrolls is 16. Yeah, mm. it's, it's pretty light. Uh, like, we'll, we'll cycle to this conversation again. But, yeah, like, you've got, uh, you've got the battle line unit, which is Arcanaut Company, and you only have that one kind of like without any conditions battle line unit then you've got thunderers who are just the Arkanaut company with better guns uh you've got and they're, they're kind of space marines right but then you've got endrin riggers uh which are a multi-part kit with sky wardens and dan's point is that the sky Wardens are meant to be the more fighty ones but they're not as good as the endrin riggers which is super fair uh, and then you have the three big boats and you kind of want to collect the three big boats so mm. you feel like and we'll talk about that more as we get into it before we do that though before we talk about each unit in individuals just talk about the story because i think um the aesthetics are very interesting so i was working at games workshop at the time when these got released and i and i stated while i was there and it's still something i believe now that this is the first time i saw the age of sigmar actually physically represented because this is like i know steampunk dwarfs aren't necessarily super mm. new narratively but it was you know like a big company with a lot of like resources mm. sculpting them into existence we got incredible mm. art we mm. got a week and like you know it's a bit of like you know the manatees where you're just picking out three keywords were like dwarf sky pirates and you stick yeah. them together <laughs> right <laughs> you're not you're not wrong but i love it like i will like you finish and then i uh, yeah but i love it as yeah no and that was going to be my point that was going to be my point i think there's absolutely no reason why because like um uh, val from the from the um the old world show on a thursday he makes a really good point um that like something people say about the old world is that they had no room to expand they were like, mm. oh, they've told all the stories in the 30 years it existed, apart from ever doing Cathay and ever doing Araby and ever actually doing any of these other places. Um, but with Carriage and Overlord specifically, I don't, I don't know how you look at that 
and you look mm. at like dwarfs loads of loads of content already yeah mm -hmm. right pirates loads of content already absolutely loads right and then like you know their mercantile kind of like sky nature like you've got so many places to go and it felt like the past couple of books were unfortunately very very uh unimaginative takes mm. on that like there's uh, someone in the chat earlier made a great point i think it was calicar it was like because they're an army because they're dwarfs they don't do magic okay sweet mm. but they've built s fucking s ships that fly through the sky so why mm. aren't there like why aren't there kind of like you know roll a d6 and on a five plus you you put down a turret or you do you know what i mean like mm. why isn't there yeah. like invention and engineering upgrades for this army mm. like that are all over the place uh that's kind of disappointing so yeah you could you could basically have their own prayer mechanic which is automatons yes yeah yeah see i yeah i i want to talk super quickly again dwarf stand but uh the reason i think it's spectacular is you look at the two big elements of any time you see dwarves right uh like anytime you see dwarves in any media you've got the two sides you've got like burly traditionalists and you've got ingenuity and creativity and and skilled creators. And what Age of Sigma has done spectacularly is lead into those two sides to the nth degree, where you've got the, the fire slayers who are traditionalists to the point that they hammer pieces of their dead god into their flesh to gain a portion of his power and blah, blah, blah. And then you've also got the, the people who abandoned the gods which is a fun story for those who are back into it grungy the the their ancestor god of like creation and the one who's kind of the dwarves main surviving god now basically pieced out because he recognized that the dwarves would never change and never evolve as long as he was around so he fucked off so that they would be forced to adapt to survive and then when the dwarves were like well fuck you i'm gonna fly up into the sky he was like secretly like oh this fucking sucks but also he was like well great that's what i wanted for you um you became your own thing and you forged yourselves anew it's a wonderful bit of storyline it's a wonderful like one two punch between the two and it gives you two wonderful flavors of dwarf and i'd use the same comparison to th what they've done with elves but they've done it in a shitter way because elves are obviously shitter on the whole come at me comments i don't fucking care <laughs> uh you've got the sea elves which i think is a rad concept you've gone like elves broken souls hiding under the seas um and then you've got uh like elves where they're like what about these elves and it's like they're in a desert and it's bright and you're like so what's that say about their personality and they're like i don't know it's fucking sunny maybe but they don't have tans do what you want uh and uh sorry again in the chat what the sky dwarves are mining is aether gold so it's basically like magical essence that floats above the realm so they collect it from clouds and they mine it and they synthesize it and use it to power all of their stuff um uh so yeah i i really dig what they did with that uh and i think it was great i think the design of a lot of the models was fantastic uh the chat coming at me for being an like an elf uh sympathizer is wrong but they they're they're great i think it's awesome and then on the table though they don't operate in any interesting way compared to how interesting their background is yeah because like because the barracks uh, and that mm. makes a really good point like they're just like that's maybe is that maybe one of the flaws that they've not done very well within age of sigma like, um, I think one of the things that I think is a little bit shame is that we don't get quite that level of love for, like, sub-factions. Mm. Like, looking at Space Marines as an example, I know these are all, like, metallic armor, um, and so it might be a little bit challenging to put any colors on them, like you see with Space Marines. But, like, I think maybe the Age of Sigmar has done a really bad job of giving us sub-factions that kind of make sense in some ways. I think they mm. did really well with the Soul Blight Grave Lords. Like, I can very much, like, feel the difference between the Vrykross mm. Dynasty versus, like, the Legion of Blood or Legion of Night. Um, but I don't think they necessarily did, like, perfectly in uh, in in Carriage on Overlords yet. Which is a shame, because, like you said, you just described the different barracks, and I was like, yeah, I'm super into this. Uh, that's really good. Um, yeah, oh, and there's a good one. Seeing, uh, thank you, Provoke Tree, seeing the Le Leagues of Votan Grimnir models made me do a complete flip on my opinion of Dwarf Magic, because the model is so damn cool. No, what I was going to say is Leagues of Votan is a good example where, you know, you see a blue Leagues of Votan versus a red Leagues of Votan, and it really kind of identifies it 
as a different faction. Um, mm. Anyway, but they did create, like, some of the artwork is phenomenal. I love the idea of the Skyports. So that's the story. We should probably, like, I know Dan touched on a little bit, but the story is the old world blew up. The dwarfs in the old world climbed to the top of a mountain, um, made boats, and then floated away, I think is the... Uh, no, 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 that's not true. Sorry, no. In the Age of Myth, there were boats mm. in the Age of Sigma. Sorry, there were there were Dwarden during the uh, Age of Sigma. Chaos came, they climbed up their mountain, and then they made boats to escape the, um, mm. the, the, the chaos, chaos on, the, on ground. the ground. Yeah, yeah, is what happened, um, which is, which is kind of cool. And then they... And it's... Uh, and now they're almost an independent faction because they're order, but they'll even mm. carry bad guys, insert bad guys, with an asterisk mm. on their boat, right? Yeah, and the, the thing I love is that they started as shanty towns. Like, they just kind of were like, fuck, we need to get away. So they floated up into the sky. And the original towns were just like a collection of lashed together, like like rafts and boats and things that slowly became cities. Uh, which I just think is like rad. Like, how cool is that? Could you imagine these massive sprawling metropolitan cities that are floating in the skies now uh, were originally just a bunch of ships tied together? I think it's awesome. Yeah, I think they're good. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's very good. Uh, James, you got any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think they're just they're just such a weird faction, aren't they? Like, they stem from like a bunch of the old fantasy stuff, and someone mentioned it in chat. So, in the old world, we had Malachi who was the crazy dwarf inventor mm. that was a slayer that got kicked out because his inventions were, like, too far. And these mm. are almost like the strung-out version of that, aren't they, I think? Yeah. Um, but I just think... Uh, I don't know. I think it's really hard to get people to get behind, or at least for me, to get behind a faction with so few models where most are heroes. And if you don't like the boats... Like yeah, if that... the boats aren't your cup of tea. You basically can't play the faction. Mm. I guess that's kind of. I guess. I guess we should. I really want to go through the units and kind of talk about mm-hmm. what they're meant to be a little bit. But I guess James is absolutely right. I think that's the thing. That's my wish list for the new Carriage and Overlords. Is I would like to see it so that not, the boats are good, right? But I would like to see it that I can run loads of boats. Which I think James is absolutely on the money. You kind of have to run the boats. Mm. But then I also would like to see some f- sub factions so I can just run the dudes. Mm. Just the dudes is is good with me. Like you know, uh, loads of Arcanaut Company, some Endred Riggers, uh, some Thunderers, and some Sky Wardens. Because if you kind of take mm. the boats out, that's quite a fun looking little army. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you I... put when you put the boats in, uh, the Ironclad has always been so, taken so often, five hundred points. Uh, in the army, that it's been so vital um, that it. it and, but it, God. it is though. Nothing matches it. Yeah. Um, y- yes. Yeah. Nothing matches it in its book. You're right. So I think I agree and, with James. But that's my wish list: is you can take loads of different armies. Like. Well, I th- I think as well. Like you look at the bubble characters, and there's only two, and one is sub faction locked. Like uh, you've got Brock. Uh, Grungson, who is the the big boss, big hat, big mustache man Lord of Barak Lord Magnate Nar. of Barak Nar. Lord Magnate. Like, but that's, he... that's a mess in its own right, right? Because Stormcast have loads of them. Yeah. But you have one named character for one faction. One named character who is okay in combat, and previously his rules have encouraged that. And then they released another bubble floating character, and it was another flying shooting support piece. So it's like even in that release, why didn't they instead of releasing a flying support piece, the the engine master in dirigible suit, um, instead of releasing another support piece, why didn't they uh, make him a combat, make him like a sky warden, like a sky master or something, give make him a combat dude to encourage the use of like combat sky wardens and combat engine riggers. He's uh, got a book though. Instead, well, no, they get no, they no, to do with a book. That's yeah, Drecky. Yeah, Derek. Mm. Um, I mean, like, yeah, no, I would agree with Dan. Like, I think they're going to be very focused on the shooting. Listen, just looking at the models, do we know, uh, James, have you got the uh, the story for Brock Grungson, uh, top of his war scroll? Uh, on uh, what, what? I can have it. Okay. Uh, I think just... Oh, yes. Let's go through oh, it. Oh, tell, no, me what, tell me what. Tell me about Brock Grungson. Because effectively, the society is built like this, again, for people who don't know. There are barracks or, like, sky cities uh, where you... Th- like, to be fair, in the Age of Sigmar, I reckon 
that's the place I'd want to live most. Like, mm. like Sigmar's a bit fashy. So it's a bit of a problem. <laughs> but this is a hyper-capitalist society, though I guess they encourage seizing the means of production because they're like, yeah, okay, if you can make it work, make it work. Rob is a uh, capitalist, though, so that's why it suits uh, him. Yeah. Provoked Tree says, out of nowhere, I want a combat boat. And I just quickly want to throw a little aside. Uh, there was a wonderful gentleman in Australia who was running what he called Hammer Boat, mm. which was a frigate full of admirals armed to the teeth with combat, like buffs and everything. Hammer and he'd boat. just charge and he'd charge the boat into units and then in combat, because this is when it was, uh, uh, this, I think, the second book or whatnot, when they could all attack out of it and then just beat the shit out of someone. So there has been the Viking Hammer longship style done. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, the, yeah, the it's... it's Yeah, you're right. Hammer boat. Let's go. Um, KO, a literal anarcho-capitalist. The current code is actual uh, non-aggression pact. I agree. So, again... Giant capitals, pretty fun and chill place. James, you'd love hanging out there. You and me, we go to some coffee shops. Maybe we buy some gems from the mortal realms. Who knows? Yeah, like I wouldn't buy the gems. Obviously, you'd buy I'd the be gems. I'd be a gambler. I'd be a gambler if I lived in the Edge of Sigma world. What in the Ko hold? I'm talking about the Ko hold specifically. Yeah, yeah, I'd be gambling, and then when it all goes wrong, I'll have to steal a gun hauler and fly off for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, oh my god! Chat GPT, write me carriage on overlords, but in the Star Wars universe story please go uh that's absolutely great that's, that's uh, gonna be the next drecky flint book is just he gets into a bunch of de- like i mean he's already a bit unscrupulous but he gets into a bunch of debt and then has to abandon and leave because he's like yep stealing a boat getting out of here before someone comes hunting it <laughs> awful okay so uh, of the, all the places i'd like to live in the old world maybe i'd like to live in the holds and then obviously all the sky boats which obviously um we've been talking about so uh and and there's an so amazing do you want to know about Brock? I do want to know about Brock, but give me a minute. There's an amazing... Okay. So, obviously, the Ironclad is one of the bigger boats. Frigate's a smaller boat, and then there's a gun hauler. But in some of the artwork, there's actually even more massive boats, which are when, when they first got showcased, I was hype. Because at that point, Forge World was doing some Age of Sigmar stuff. I was hype for the stupid boat. Do you know what I mean? Like the Warlord mm. Titan, Carriage on Overlord Skyship, the Sky Manta. Of 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 yeah. ship would have been amazing. So yeah, so they are a society, and then they take contracts. Um, all of the different barracks have different like. There's a thing called the code, which is like kind of how they live, but they all interpret it differently. And all the different barracks are kind of at war, but not really at war. And they're like trading, and um, so they're traders, they're merchants, they're mercenaries. And that's the that's the Carriage and Overlords in a mm. nutshell, effectively. Um, which is, I think that's it. That's fair, right? That's a fair review. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then is Barack Obama in KO? No, he's not. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you, we don't know who's under the armor because they've only given a handful of models no mask. Yeah, but uh, they, but also the KO don't have helmet. a lot of missiles. Oh, wah, wah, wah. Go on, James. Sorry. I was going to say they can't remove their helmet, and they remembered some of them have, so that doesn't work. Oh, yeah, mm. no, yeah, they can. Um, uh, right, I'm surprised there's no single man boats like a gyrocopter. That's also the other kind of news as well. There's obviously the cities of Sigmar, and a real question for all of us is are we going to see the gyrocopter, which is a dwarf in a flying boat, kind of. That's more of a helicopter, mm. making it into the new KO book. That's the real question. I think, I think they're probably going in the bin. Probably. Probably not. <laughs> right. All right, tell me about Brock. So he's the named character, the faction leader. You would expect to maybe get the War Master keyword in a okay. version 3 book. I mean, he's he's technically got the title that you tell me you long for. So Lord, Lord Magnate <laughs> Brock Grunson is the what? richest. Why are you trying to fuck me over on today's show? Like, what have I done to you? <laughs> because what have I, I done to you this say, week? Like, every time you're like, hey, sign up to the Patreon, under your breath, you're like, so I can be the richest man in Britain. That's what you always say. <laughs> oh, he never so says poor. he wants to be the richest man in Britain. All he ever says to me is, do you know what I want to be? Lord Magnate. <laughs> that's it. He, I'm not he sure he knows says, what a Lord Magnate is. He always but that's says what oppressor he of the people as well, which I find odd. Why, what have I done wrong? I've been working so hard. <laughs> I've made long form videos for Dan, short video form videos. What more can I do to appease you two? Dickheads. Right, okay. Go on, James. Sorry, Lord. Lord so, Magnate. Oh sorry. my God. Yeah, uh, sorry, 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 Lanster. Sorry. Um, so, Lord Magnate, Brock 
Grungson yeah. is the richest Caradron privateer alive. So there's some dead ones that have got more money. Clad in a custom-built Endrian harness and carrying a small armory of lethal firearms, he seeks out fresh sources of Aether Gold with single-minded belligerence. Just FYI, not that deadly. <laughs> Just as <laughs> well, as I said, it, I was like, I can yeah. see a wounds on four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. It's like it's like they've custom crafted the most powerful set of armor for him, and then there's like a random dude just like, "Hey, I'm a bit better," and you're like, "Ah." What armor set has he got? Three up. Oh, okay. That's that's good. That's he good. should have a two up. I was about like, to say but what. He's, uh, what but he's quickly. What also other very cheap characters have a three up armor save uh, from just, from this range? Just pretty much all of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, yeah. just one. Oh no, just the admiral. Sorry. Oh no, two. Two. Okay, so like, so it's kind of interesting because faction leaders in Age of Sigmar are pretty wild, right? You got Marathi, mm. who's so quintessential to her army. Uh, every single army list I've ever seen in the past, like, like eight weeks, we, has had Teclis in that's got Lunar mm. Throne Lords. Alariel features in quite a few Silver Nether lists, not loads, but enough. Archeon's legitimately his own build. Uh, Nagash really isn't in vogue at the minute, but I'm sure that'll change with the new Soul Blight and OCR books. Um, so faction leaders are kind of Scragrot is now, oh boy, not a problem. I'd like you to know, absolutely fine uh, for his points. Balanced, not, you would say. I would argue yes, it's very balanced. It is fine. <laughs> Five months, three weeks left. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lady Alinda uh, is this guy. You don't actually see Lady Alinda in a lot of lists, but yeah, faction leader. So these faction leaders are kind of like. God level down to like the Lady Alinda, flesh of course, obviously don't get one. But uh, you Beast still of Chaos. see them regularly. Even Lady Alinda, who you don't see as often anymore, you still see her. Like she's still a play. Yeah, but yeah, you, she is still a play. And then some armies like Beast of Chaos um, and then Ogres, they don't even have a named character, which is a bit mm. weird. So I, I, I don't really know how I feel about faction leaders. And also Lord Magnate of Barak Nar doesn't really have like. Basically, he's Batman. He's like, I'm mega rich, mm. and I can afford all the gear. I don't know if I'm it's... bothered about him being good in the book. Well, mm. but it's it's also weird, right? Because I'm thinking about it. So let me just go back to his war scroll. Yeah. Hang on. Let me just find him again. Obviously, I'm just going to flick through the pages of my r- bought KO book. <laughs> um, yes, correct. Hang on. Oh, let me find it. This order is terrible. Right. So it says... He seeks out fresh sources of Aether Gold with single mind and belligerence, right? Yeah. So actually, he's super wealthy, but he's he's still just looking for gold, mm-hmm. right? Mm. Why is he hunting Beasts of Chaos? They got no gold. They've not even got trousers. <laughs> like, he doesn't need all those weapons. Just yeah. get in the ship, turn up, send the peasants to mine, get back in the ship, go home. I, it's the same. It's the same thing as Elon Musk. Like the man had so much money. All he had to do was buy an island, live on the island. He could have read every book, watched every TV mm-hmm. show, literally done anything with his life. And he thought, "What if I get bullied on the internet by everyone instead?" Because I'm a twat. <laughs> like he literally. What, like, what he, he actually thought was, "How do I ruin Twitter?" Yeah, he thought, "How do I ruin yeah. Twitter?" And also prove that I'm not a genius and a moron. Yeah, you and know, like it was. He went for it. I think it was that moment where it's like, "Okay, you've you've won life. Congratulations, you won capitalism. Um, you're the best at it. No one can ever take that away from you right now. You are at the epilogue of your story." And he said. What if we do a sequel trilogy? And it all just went downhill from there, unfortunately. It was like you went high, and then he was like, sequels are always better, right? He did a sequel to life, to, to, to success, and it fucking sucked. Okay, so Batman, Elon Musk, Brock Grunson, I'm no longer in. I don't want also, him. The, un- the no, only that- thing I'm going to throw in there is that it's a shame that for such a heavily designed model and the the big number one that he's always been a skew list character. Like, he's never been but- good. But yeah, he also ties you into to one, what are they called? Uh, barrack. One barrack. Like he he's literally like take this hero, you play one barrack. He uh, and mm. so then you're saying if he's really good, what we're saying is 
everyone plays one Barrett for the next six mm. months. Yeah, another name is Skyport. Yeah, that's another name. Yeah, okay. yeah. either I'm, or. We yeah, don't yeah, want him. Put yeah, him I'm, in the bin. Yeah, yeah, get him in the bin. All right, okay, that's super fair. Uh, w- before we talk about maybe any of the characters, let's just like maybe just do the boaties. Kind of talk yep. about the boats because you so, gotta have the boats. Because well, I mean, I would like to see some non-boat lists. I think that's kind of the problem. Yeah, um, but currently you'd have to have a boat, right? Currently, you yes. you only like, like 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 there was a good point where quite often I'd look at a table and be like, "That's all boats." So yeah. just boats. There was never a point where I've looked there... at a table and gone, "Oh, that KO player is just playing people." Dwarfs. Throughout the the updates and the points changes, there ha- I will say there has been a good variety of usability on the boats. Like there was at the start, it was only um, the ironclads. Then it was like the double frigate Iron Sky Battalion. So rather than an ironclad, you ran two frigates for a bit more versatility. There was a period where gun haulers got a big points drop, so they were king. And you just oh, saw yeah, like five, like you saw maximum gun haulers that you could take into it. Like so, there there has been variety on boats. The shame is that there's been little to no variety on. On troops, because realistically, you always just took whatever shot the best. There was a tiny little foray. There was this beautiful brief moment where it was the the overpowered charging Endron riggers, where you had like a unit of nine Endron riggers, but you buffed them so that they had two attacks each on their super good weapon instead of one attack each. Uh, and they were a glass cannon, so they'd kill one unit and then they'd immediately die. Yeah, the uh, the 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 boats are the boats are very interesting because um, they they don't care so much about their own rules. The thing that they really care about is the priority roll. Like yeah. Ko Ko would trade all the money in the world, which is funny, uh, for the Archeon's ability to see the next turn. Because basically mm. they're like, because you see all the lists, and every list is basically like, hope I don't get doubled. Uh, that's the answer. Okay, so uh, we've got the gun hauler. The frigate and the ironclad. James, do you want to start us off? Let's go little big. Do you want to read me? Start off with the gun hauler, and uh, talk yeah. about this little this little chap. Because this, I think, is a one man boat. Two, 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 two man boats. Two man boat. Uh, gun stock a small, maneuverable, yeah. and deadly. The Grunstock gun hauler is an escort class ship. Okay. Tasked with ensuring the safety of the air fleet's larger sky vessels. They perform this role well, swarming in defense before peeling off to launch deadly attack runs. Okay. Ever seen a hauler do that? No. I mean yeah. it's it's kind of an odd like it's kind of an odd piece in that like it, you know, it's kind of like a cannon, kind of like a, mm. a, a which you don't really have any seen right at the minute. Kind of like a bolt thrower, like you know, you kind of the elves have got one. Um, and I guess, I guess it's kind of like an iron blaster, but not quite an iron blaster. So it's got like it's awkward, right? Because effectively, you're always being like, okay, it's gun with, it's a boat with guns, it's a mm. bigger boat with guns, and it's a bigger boat with guns. So you really yeah. like, I, I don't know if you hyper specialize them. I don't know how you differentiate between the three. Other than it just doesn't do as much damage and is X points. It's not really, and that's not really how scale and uh, and like picking units in the game yeah. really works. So it's kind of an odd one because the design has almost pigeonholed them as being difficult to produce yeah. for. I don't know how I would do it. I would maybe make them anti something. You know, if you made the gun hauler anti, I don't know, in- anti monsters, and then you made the frigate mm. anti infantry. See, I go the other way. I hope they make gun haulers cheap and shitty with a- an anti-infantry because the idea is that they're an escort vessel, right? Yeah. So they're not taking out the big monster that's threatening the thing. They're taking out the the like if you uh, like think about it as I think about like a star fleet or or a ships or something like that. You know, like battles over the Pacific with um, carriers launching fighters. Their job is to keep the fighters clear you know like they're they're clearing the skies for the big ships to do it so let these be lots of little scratchy shots they're not really going to take down a stone horn but they're going to keep the the noblars from swarming the ship but make these have like a five up six up save make them cheap and make them shitty so you do get like a gaggle of them trying to screen the bigger ships so they're jo- they're not because at the moment they're like a kind of like a gun platform and so you want to keep them shooting not 
not actually what they're supposed to be, which is an escort. Uh, so that's uh, what that would be my given, dream. like a bodyguard rule or something. I think they have they have yeah, had the they rule have... to pass off wounds, but it's never their position and their their points cost and their cannon has always been more better put to use do it dealing damage rather than being an escort vessel. So make these an escort vessel. Make them make them chaff. That's what I, I want to see. Yeah, I have to. They have a weird. Uh, if a, another sky vessel that's within three of them takes a wound on a six, the wound just disappears. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a there's a couple of interesting points being made in the chat, uh, which I quite like. Um, I wonder what sky vessel insurance is like. Expensive, I imagine, uh, based on yep. how many go down, like a lot. Um, and someone said, "What's a group? Uh, what's a pr- uh, pronoun for a group of gun haulers?" Now I'm very interested in making, um, like, doing some kit bashing and making a bunch of nun haulers and just having a bunch of nuns in the boats, uh, which is uh, <laughs> something I wasn't expecting to do at this show. But yeah, I want some yeah. nun haulers. Cool. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, uh, James. Talk to me about the frigate. Let's let's the pick f- it up a little bit because we went from frigate. one bubble, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which Dan? What is in the bubble? What floats a boat? Uh, like it's it's aether. Like they uh, synthesize the aether, like aether gold, aether quartz, like the st- aether whatever that they collect, and they you make a chemical out of that that floats their boats. Okay. So now we're moving up to the frigate, which has got three balloons. Okay. okay. And then it looks like several dwarfs. Yes. The sleek and deadly profile of an Arcanaut mm. frigate is a sight greatly feared by the Caradron's many enemies who knew all too well the devastating <laughs> firepower these airships possess and the fighting spirit of the privateers they carry into battle. See... Uh, first, my first point is, I think of the three, this is my favourite boat. I'm just going to put mm, that okay. out there. I don't know about you two. Uh, I, I, this is the one that I've painted the most of. Okay. Right, <laughs> Does that fair. mean you like it the most? I actually do. I So I've painted two gun haulers, three frigates, and two ironclads uh, in all of my painting time. And I, uh, the frigate is the, for me, is the most satisfying to paint. Okay. Uh, James, what's your favourite of the three, do you think? Uh, I quite like the big face on the big boy, I think. Mm. Um, but the balloons are nicer on the frigate. I like the balloons. Uh, there's a guy at the top as well just looking out, which is really fun. Uh, we- weirdly, I think the frigate mo- looks more like a boat than all the others. I, that's what I was about to say. I think I would prefer the frigate, weirdly, to be the transport. And then the mm. gun, and then the ironclad to not be the transport, to be the battleship, to be like the battleship and just just shoot, and like that's yeah. what you take it for. So if you do want mobility, you go down to a frigate, um, and yeah. then like that would be really fun. I know it does, but what I more mean is that's its main focus because what mm. people do, um, like, is obviously they just load it all up into the ironclad does everything, so you take the ironclad. Like uh, at, at the moment, a frigate is a shit version of an ironclad. So why would you take an ironclad? Yes. Uh, why would you take a frigate? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So uh, like, because yeah. I think there there was a period where frigates were strong because they had a formation that let them shoot twice in the first turn. So that made them great. But largely, an ironclad, one ironclad has more output, like shooting and damage output, than two frigates for less points so why would you take two frigates just to, for those who aren't familiar with the list yeah yeah it's, it's it's a weird yeah why wouldn't you take yeah like so you they need to differentiate right um and then finally uh the ironclad james what does it say about this big mm. grilly thick king yeah the th- yeah the thicky amongst the heaviest caradron ships of the line the redoubtable ironclads provide a floating fortress of iron at the heart of any air fleet, bombarding their targets from afar with explosive shells and armor-piercing torpedoes. Right, okay. I want to talk about this, but there's also something we haven't mentioned at all when we're talking about the boats, which is very bad of us because we're on the Honest Wargamer, is the flight sticks are shit. Oh my god, yeah. We haven't talked about that yet. Like, literally almost worthless buying them. Like, never put the flight stick in. You're going to have to 
do I've, something else, right? I've done seven, and I only tried to do the flight stick in one. Uh, and, and after I realized how it was actually the first frigate I ever did. And after I realized how bad it was, it was freaking metal rods, baby. Uh, or like I'd conceal, I'd pin it to a metal rod and conceal it in like some basing terrain or something like that. Uh, the, yeah, you have to do something with the terrain, uh, like with the stick, cause the stick is effectively worthless. Uh, so that, I mean, and that's a bit of a rip, right? That they, mm. they haven't produced a product solution for that they're just oh, like I, all on, their dude. flight sticks are bad i am um, i picked up the middle earth eagles whenever it was for that event and when i they're the old one so it's like the big round old clear base with the stick that goes in mm. and they were so badly made that when i pushed the stick into one it went halfway in and stopped <laughs> and then the next one i pushed in and the stick was so bad it snapped in half it didn't no. go into the base it just snapped so i threw them all in the bin and used a metal rod yeah <laughs> in and rod we like, trust yeah it's that weird thing right like how can a, a company that make have they've made flying models and flying stands for a long time and they seem to only get worse <laughs> i mean this one's particularly bad this is very te- top heavy is all i'm gonna say um uh like but where what's the alternative um i you just use a, like a, a like a brass rod um mm. a lot of people what they do is they build up some sort of terrain and then terrain they just piece. they yeah. just like stick it to the side of the terrain is what you see a lot of, uh, in so my opinion. So a really good one I've seen for travel uh, is that you have like a terrain piece with a like a ruin with a spire or something, and then you you can because you can conceal a big magnet in there, and you just magnetize that to say the side of the boat or one of the lower elements of the boat, and that like it can provide the support it needs, but also then you can take it off the big base to transport. Oh it. my god, that's the fucking joke of the army. He's not Brog Grunson, Lord Magnate. He's Brock Grunson, <laughs> Lord Magnet. Magnet. Lord Magnet yep. of the magnets you need for this fucking army. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Boo. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> uh, right, okay, yeah, he's the Magnet Baron. Now we know who this is. He's the Magnet Baron. That makes him way cooler. Yeah, yep. that makes that it makes way sense. cooler. There we go. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. Right. So ironclad is the big, the big shooty gumbo, right? Like that's what it. That's what it is. It's out the, of stock. It's out. It's a, a fucking <laughs> as as my good friend Simon and James, your friend Simon says in the chat. Yeah. Um. Remember, you became friends. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. Everything's out of stock, but it's probably being repackaged. Who knows? Who knows? I think or... just the whole of games work out of stock. All I've seen for the past couple of weeks is poor LGSs being like, "There's no stock." Do you want the very, well, I mean, very yeah. quick TLDR on the situation? Yeah. Okay. Very I, quick. I'd love the TLDR. Very quick TLDR. So they are affected. We always think of Games Workshop as a miniatures company. Sometimes we make jokes that they're a, a games company, but they're just a manufacturing company like anyone else. They manufacture something. They've got a fancy architecture on top to sell us their shit, right? Um, and so they, they, a lot of the modern companies they use something called Sage. It's basically they're like yep. the the stock that they have in. And their delivery method. That's what it is, right? But Games Workshop didn't have that, so they wanted to upgrade to Sage or whatever the fuck it is, right? They wanted to upgrade their software, which is pretty huge an undertaking. A lot of businesses do this, and it's like a it's a major issue. Anyway, they started something like three years ago, right? And then, my assumption is, if you remember, they also have got that warehouse outside of Nottingham now, near the Amazon warehouse, for more is stock Is that the storage. one last episode you were, say, or two episodes ago, you... There was something about they've got a power issue. No, no, no. So then they moved manufacturing in GW to like, because it was always the bottom floor of one building. They moved it to like another place so they could have more manufacturing because they basically several years ago reached manufacturing capacity because when they Mm. got their marketing department and their like sales rocketed, they were just like, oh, we can't actually make any more. So they made, they bought like another building. They moved on the manufacturing there and then they did it. And then what happened is two fuck ups at once. If you look at look at the most recent investor report, they were like, "So yeah, the Sage thing, we've just given up trying because we have fucked it up so badly." And then <laughs> the other thing is that where they put the manufacturing, it they weren't able to get enough power because it's on the same power grid or lines as the local hospital, 
and that gets first preference. So they can't upgrade how much power they're drawing to then run the manufacturing. So we're now in this amazing two-pronged fuck-up where they will have done a lot of like... Like, they would have been like, right, okay, in 2023, we're going to increase production by X, and we've also got X storage, um, which is going to be super useful, um, and therefore we'll do more Necromunda, more Age of Sigmar, more everything else. And so then they were like, oh, fuck, we actually don't know how much stock we've got because of Sage, and then we can't do projections because that's all fucked, and also we can't produce as much because we fucked that up as well. And then we're here. That's 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 the shortest I can make that. I'm sorry. Nice, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, they've also told the, uh, the German stores their new central warehouse for delivery has software issues. That's the issue that I'm talking about. Anyway, that's the the very quick TLDR. Um, uh, but big boat. Interested in a big boat? I still love a big boat. He's still a th- he's still a thick king. It and then the yeah. frigate is my slim queen, and the gun hauler is like. I don't know, the the stepchildren. If that it come needs with to be like a star destroyer, like I'm going Star Wars here. It needs to mm. be like a star destroyer, doesn't it? And probably the Imperial side more, like the big fat medical frigate that fires at everything. Yeah. Is the Arcanor ironclad thing? Like it just shoots stuff. It doesn't take lads on board unless they're also mm. shooting stuff. Then you need the boat that gets people places in a frigate, picks them up, drops them off, whatever else. And then the yeah. little boat should just be there to annoy people. I think the and hearing that as well, I like that. Make it. I hope. I hope it's a gunboat. I, you're right. I hope it can't transport units. Um, I hope its movement is like six inches a turn where the frigate is like 12. But what I really hope is that if the ironclad, because at the moment they have the fly high ability, right? Where they can come off of the table and then come back down in the perfect position and shoot, right? I hope that the frigate can do that in a turn because its vibe is that it's fast, right? So I hope it comes off, comes back the same turn. And the thing about the frigate is they're a bit more lightly armed and armored, but they're quick. Whereas I hope if the ironclad comes up, it's a way for like two turns because it's slow and ponderous and it takes a long time. So if you're pulling the fly, the ironclad to fly high and come down somewhere, you're like, I'm pulling a lot of my output for a couple of turns uh, rather than just, oh, cool, I'll come down and I'll shoot the ever-loving shit out of someone. Yeah, I'd quite like their weapons to be fairly short range, but devastating. You know, mm. kind of like like they, they just absolutely own the territory they're in. Kind of a Gotrek silent situation. But, like, if you get within 12 inches, you are fucked, right? But, like, it's quite difficult, and they can be managed a little bit, um, which I think is interesting. Um, okay, all right, so that's the uh, that's the ironclad. They're the boats. Uh, kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. Um, mm-hmm. They've got a bunch. I love that he's the Magnet Lord now. Uh, should we talk Magnet. about the... Ba- should we talk about the battle line, dude? So you normally you get a captain. Well, not a captain. We should probably talk about the characters. You've got an admiral, mm-hmm. and it's kind of weird. He's an admiral. Yeah, like admirals usually have a fleet, not like two to five, like one to five boats. I don't want to be disrespecting any admirals in the chat, though. If, no. Like if you've an admiral of only a few ships, much love to you and respect to your level of admiral ship i guess is the right way mm. of saying that is that the right way of saying it i don't know but all i'm going to say is that most of the time if you've got an admiral you've got one ironclad and i don't get on board an air canada flight to england and then they're like oh this is the admiral from the flight deck you know like it's all it would be you'd be uncomfortable if that's what you heard yeah if I it was like... know, you might have a really nice flight yeah <laughs> I, I, or you might the... fall asleep at the wheel one or the other I don't even know if it's a wheel, is it? Isn't it a stick? Well, it's like a stick, gear, wheel, plane, control. <laughs> James, <laughs> really? Come on, what is it? Come no, on, I got have, this. Wait, no, haven't you seen on the... I think the, It's the frigate. It's part of it. It's like a wheel and a, a, a thing. Like, he pulls down on a, a lever like a, a freaking um, hot air balloon, I think, to give it lift. <laughs> he's just it's just a pump he's just moving he's it back got, and forth he's, yeah. he's got a wheel and like i love that it's this big high-tech thing and it's like oh how do we get lift and he's like you just pull down on this chain it's like what if you lose balance and accidentally grab it it's like well we're going fucking up buddy <laughs> right so you got the admiral uh it, which is kind of your like default kind of like i guess oh, have you know it's the cream of the crop of the skyports okay tell yeah go on tell us tell us the story for the admiral tell us Arcanaut admirals yeah. are the cream of the Skyport officer class. 
ignoring the fact he's an admiral. Yep. Intrepid leaders and battle-hardened veterans of a thousand aerial engagements. Wow. Whose booming commands inspire their crew to mighty deeds in the search for profit. Okay, if he's so... been in a thousand battles where all the ships lived, yep. he probably <laughs> deserves to be an admiral. Yeah, okay, that's fair. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. What's weird though is he has been in a th- like each admiral's been in a thousand battles. Like there must be a lot of fucking battles in sp- the skies. Mm. Is what I'm thinking. Oh, More I than I would think. Like, if they're flying along and he shoots, like he'll be like, they'll be like, ah, oh, some birds, sir. And then he's like, light them up. They like shoot up a bunch of birds, and then he's like, ah, another successful battle. You know, like you just, it's like, like you know, when people need to get a in Australia now, if you want to get a license, you need to do like a hundred or two hundred hours of like supervised driving. And a lot of people, they're like, yeah, you probably did that. Like it's like just like it's like a tick. I think that's kind of it. It's like l- what a battle is. Is they're like, ah, oh, shit, a bird landed on a railing and he shoot it away, and he's like, ah, yeah. Yeah, we successfully resisted a boarding action. Put that on the ledger. <laughs> Put that on the uh, ledger. Yeah, like very, very low bar. Okay, I like that. Um, and he's kind of like, he basically, so a lot of these characters, the Admiral, the Navigator, etc., they and the uh, Endrian Rigger, uh, not Endrian Rigger, whatever it's called, <laughs> um, the other fella, um, the Aether Chemist and stuff, they normally like benefit the boats and not the dudes. And again, that's, I think, one of the problems is that like, they like it's all about buffing the boats and not buffing the guys um so and i guess that's maybe why we're so focused on um i think that's why we're so focused on that uh okay i'm arkinal admiral he's pretty cool he's got a wicked hammer i'm a big fan of him i don't know what you two Mm. think yeah good hammer rubbish gun uh rubbish gun uh yeah, he's, he shouldn't be have a good gun, though. He should be a, a good beat stick. He's finally in this He has a good beat stick. There's been some lists where people take a bunch of admirals. Yeah, and he's but, got because he's got three attacks now. In the first book, he only had two attacks. You had your combat leader of the army, who only had two attacks, and now he's got three. But, but who's he leading into combat? Because there is no one good there to lead. Yeah, two other admirals on a frigate. <laughs> two other admirals yeah, yeah. into but, combat. But so, so what we're saying is... The Caradron Overlords, only fighters, the only people that can get in a scrap are the guys who've survived a thousand battles. And then what our solution is, right, make an Admiral and send him in. He's all we've got. (laughs) Every time. (laughs) Promote him to Admiral so that he can fight. That's it. Um, thank you, by the way, to Dabon Napgod for donating five gift subs in the chat. Uh, donating them because he's like, there's too many unsub people in the chat. It's sick, making me sick. Uh, <laughs> so he is the Lord Magnate today. Thank you, Dadbod. Nice. Um, appreciate you loads. All right, let's move on. Uh, so we've got the uh, we've got the Hammer Admiral and a load of Hammer Admirals. Then the Etheric Navigator. Um, it's who... the spell in the bottle, dickhead, right? So the navigator is uh, specifically good because he's he's an mm. anti flying unit model. Um, he's mm. he's like legit cool model, like legit. Yeah. Like I, I haven't painted one of these, but that must be so much fun if you're someone who likes doing gems, and then absolutely not mm. fun if you don't uh, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't know about the paint jobs. What do you think about the paint? Anyway, what do you think about the model down at least? Uh, I think the model's spectacular. I, I painted none of mine with metallic armor. Like, they're all kind of like, you know, I used colors for the armor, and it looks so much better. I think the set, the paint jobs being all metallic in the, the um, website photography and in the heavy metal photography do not do these models justice because you lose the beautiful shininess of the gems and the glass and the uh, all of that and the rivets. They're just lost in a sea of, like, gold, brassy metal. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but the model's great. This is actually, it was a great lesson painting all of the Skyport stuff because it's what taught me how to paint glass. And it was, and now it's very quick and it's a really effective process and I look for reasons to do it. Yeah, it does look really, really fun. Uh, thanks, Dabbod, for donating four more gift subscriptions to the chat. <laughs> he's fucking livid. Yeah, he's now the Lord <laughs> Magnate. He's like, if you are an unsub bitch in this chat, right, I'm fucking, you. you're you're getting one. Uh, <laughs> now some Norwegian mm. dude's doing it. He's div- Daddy's given one to you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate, I'm like, okay, so I always forget and then Busted. I get shamed. I get shamed. <laughs> <sighs> 
Uh, anyway, uh, thank you, Dad. Bond. Some Norwegian dudes done you over there, Dan. That's embarrassing. Uh, it's I, nice. God, I hate it when they notice that. <laughs> Fuck. It happens every now and then, and I'm like, ah, shit. <laughs> I even literally looked at it, and I was like, I need to, I need to do this before someone gets me. And I'm like, I'm not going to do it now while we're on stream. And then, of course. It's, yeah, Val it's, waits. It's fine. Val well, waits to do it on stream, so he does it while he's live himself. <laughs> right. Like... Okay. <laughs> I like the fact that Nathan probably doesn't have a stream because he doesn't know where Twitch is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's just on the call. Uh, Nathan's, by the way, uh, was in Berlin this weekend, so that's why he's not here today. Uh, thank you, Dad Bod. <gasps> Holy shit! Jesus Whoa. Christ! The sh- I've, please, yeah. Thank you for shaming other people other than themselves. Some Norwegian dude. Thank you for shaming me. I do have a, like, I usually have a praise kink, but it's nice to go the other way sometimes. Uh, but for everybody else, like, you know, good. And Deckbox is getting in on it and absolutely livid. That, <laughs> absolutely livid that there are any left. And, and donated, what, 20? Okay, that's amazing. Thanks, chat. Thanks, chat. Thanks, chat. Right, now, none of you, all, this, oh, great. I always like it when someone donates one and there's a there's a Games Workshop member in the chat. That fucking that fucking tickles me pink. Like I never out them. I always see who they've been given to. Anyway, um, uh, call the printer. Yeah, spray and pray, bitches. <laughs> oh no! Now you're all doing it. Stop it. We're trying to do a review. Thank you to Avian Thalum for donating. What is that? Twenty gift subs. That's stupid. That's okay. Jesus okay. Christ. And the, you know what? Hey, I just want to point it out there. This is happening. This is happening on a show about dwarves. Not a fucking elf show. Do you see <laughs> is this? Does this happen on your elf shows? God, no. This is clearly a beard supremacy move, and I love it. Yeah, this is this is the we're dwarves and we're rich uh, level of, like, uh, <laughs> peer pressure. Thanks for, re- just... thanks for subscribing. <laughs> It's it just everyone's here for the thick kings, and I'm about it. You don't need to be tall; you just got to be thick and hairy. Oh, wow. and anyone, can, any like, and that's you don't need to be a dude. Anyone can be thick and hairy. I love them all. Yeah, anyone can be thick and hairy. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you so much to everyone who's donated gift subs. That's wild of you. You, oh my god, now guys doing it. Oh my god, who's he done it to? <laughs> Stop it, Jesus. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much for doing that. Um, what's the story for the Navigator, James, please? The Navigator? Yeah. Uh, utilizing cutting-edge athematic science in order to decipher the ever-changing wind patterns of the mortal realms, etheric navigators are invaluable presence upon any Caradron sky vessel. Uh, okay. All right. Well, that's boring. He deciphers a load of stuff that we didn't know existed and still don't know how it works or how it existed. The Navigator is a weird one, right? The Navigator and the Chemist kind of fulfill the same role there, are kind of like engineers in a lot of ways of the of the book and also of the of the range. So I'm like, like, so if we compare them to the Chemist, have you got a preference, Dan? One of these two you prefer? Uh, I infinitely prefer the model of the Navigator, and I think the effect the Navigator have has is a lot more unique. However, nine times out of ten, the Chemist does more for the army. The Chemist does more for the army, like on tabletop. Uh, I think is is like the 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 Chemist will almost always have a small to medium use in a game. Uh, like a, sorry, a mid to to high use in a game. Whereas uh, an etheric navigator, the time that their abilities are useful fucks your opponent hard. I, but I, I'm not, not even talking likely. about the abilities, Dan. I'm just talking about yeah. like just the cool. Uh, and I've got some sad news as well. Two things. Number one, thank you so much for the five gift subscriptions from an anonymous user. Ooh, whoa, oh. whoa! Mm. Everyone, anon- everyone take credit. Everyone take. Everyone take credit. Say who did it in the chat. <laughs> Say it was you. <laughs> Um, my question in, uh, my, so my question to Dan and James, both being of a similar age to me, would you like me to ruin, uh, a bit of eighties sci-fi for you? Fucking ruin it. If it, but if it's the Transformers original movie, don't, cause that's the best movie of all it's time. It's not that. It's, okay, the, ruin it's away. the film, the flight of the navigator. Oh, fucking love that movie. Oh, tread carefully. Okay. This isn't like a Milo and Otis, all of the pets died kind of thing, is it? No, it's uh, okay. it's it's uh, James. Are you still okay for you don't want me? Yeah, to yeah, it? you carry on. I don't care. 
You've not, you don't like Flight of the Navigator. That's all right. What? Anyway. Who are you? Well, yeah. So, uh, the long story short is the uh, the kid actor, because of the uh, massive pressure of being famous in Flight of the Navigator, became pretty, uh, had a very tragic back, tragic end story. And sadly, uh, is either in jail or dead now, which is super sad way to oh. end. Yeah, kind of end up. So, it looks like he didn't navigate life well. <laughs> <laughs> Take back all of those gift subs, but uh, everyone. I don't. But I don't also, addiction is a real problem. So just be conscious of that and reach out to people who care. Yeah, that's a funny joke. That was <laughs> funny, right? That was fine, right? Oh, good movie call out. Yeah, that was a good movie. I love that movie. I like Kenny didn't hear the joke. He was like, "Yeah, good movie. Don't worry about <laughs> it." <laughs> okay, that's it. Yeah, we like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh I, I i yeah so at the moment i if you're asking me which is cooler navigator is cooler but chemists have largely been more useful uh i don't know anything about uh well it's the right stream for short stories that's true <laughs> oh, <Sorry>. wow <laughs> that's a good joke <laughs> i just love that the uh, I've I've said it a few times uh, before. I don't think I've said it yet on this stream, but I love that the least aerodynamic race is the most aerodynamic allegiance in the Age of Sigma. <laughs> like if you think about it, a dwarf is that like it's like what's the least aerodynamic shape? And a long time ago, you know, like back when uh, bullets were like ball and shot musket, people realized they were like a ball is not aerodynamic at all. And effectively, all a dwarf is is like a ball of clay with a couple of arms and like stubby arms and legs. They're the ones flying. Yeah. Well, uh, by the way, just update. So thanks from that bod. Uh, in 2018, there was a production began on the documentary about Kramer's life. Uh, the the actor who played the child in Flight of the Navigator. He was also a child at the time. He didn't become a child to play the role. Uh, and then <laughs> <laughs> the documentary is called Life After the Navigator. Uh, it was released in November 2020 on Blu-ray disc and select streaming providers. And as Joggers pointed out, he was arrested by Mounties though. So while not cool that he ended up kind of in a tough position in life, at least he got arrested by the Mounties, but apparently Mounties uh, are really savage. Uh, well, okay, so oh Dan, you're the from there. What's going yeah, on with the Mounties? Got, well, there's so there's the regular police, and then there's the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And sadly, the RCMP don't uh, like you don't see them rocking out around Canada on horses as much. They do just drive cars, um, but they're basically like the 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 the. the uh, G-Men police. Does one of them at least sit on top of the car also, obviously, uh, fuck the Pope? Uh, yeah, so what happens is the rest of them get to ride in it, but uh, as is tradition, one has to sit on the top of the car and hold, like, a set of reins like they're like the car is some kind of horse nice. chariot. Nice. Yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. Uh, okay, right. A navigator, uh, pretty cool. Um, I'd like to see the navigator get some, like, more, you know, almost some sort of ability, like, where they look into the sky or they look into the the future. Mm. Not the future, but you know what I mean? Like, maybe they could, yeah. they could predict something a few turns ahead or something. That would be mm. cool. Uh, and then yeah. the chemist, why is this motherfucker not giving out drugs to everyone? Why is he not like, what, do you know what I mean? Like some poisons? Why is he not giving them some like hopped up drugs? Mm. Like they're sky pirates. You telling me there's not a little bit of like meth based rum floating around? Yeah. Well, there like, is a brewmaster. Let's remember there's a brewmaster who specializes in getting everyone drunk. Mm. Oh, but, it, uh, is that not in this army? Yeah, he's a, he's a KO. I don't okay. think he's had rules in the book for a while, but he was the, the model that they released. Uh, a little while ago. He's a sexy model too. No helmet. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, but I think the chemist is about getting other people fucked up. Like he smokes out the, you know, like he hot boxes the deck so everyone else seals their helmet and anyone who tries to board them gets high. Oh, so he's like a gasser. So he like gasses everyone. Yeah. So his his job is usually to suck up the, the, ga the like aether stuff and test it and then be like, this is what we're getting. Oh, like this is the good stuff or this is the bad stuff. Okay. All right. And then finally, uh, I think, yeah, that's all the special characters. Yeah, we've done that. Uh, we've got the guy in the dirigible suit, just another dude in a boat. In a boat. Uh, we've got the kind of the infantry unit. So, James, what does it say about them Arcanaut company, my friend? 
they're the basic boys, right? They're the basic boys, Arkanaut Company. Wait, is the Endrin Master still around? Uh, the, there's the one in the dirigible suit, but is the, the character still on the website? The foot dude? Not on the website. Oh, there's the shit. Admiral Navigator, uh, Lord Magnate, there's Derek Flint. The, f- the foot Endrin Master is gone. That's interesting. interesting so the, yeah. the dude in the dirigible suit, there used to be, a like, which was arguably for me one of the coolest models. He was the engine master on foot. He had a bigger fuck off hammer than the Admiral, and he had a portable anvil on his back to do just some fucking anviling. Oh, maybe, uh, they're, just, maybe they're just sold out or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, talk yeah. about Derek. Derek. He's gone. He's <laughs> going to be in the Vanguard box. Oh, he's going to be in the Vanguard box, Dan. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The Vanguard box, just so you know, because uh, they've showcased it, is... Um, uh, no, that's an Admiral. The Admiral's in the Vanguard box. Yeah, that's box. an Admiral. Yeah. Okay, um, all right. So, just our regular dudes. Now, in my personal opinion, this is one of the best kits in Age of Sigmar. The 10 yeah. Arknaut Company are 11 out of 10, in my opinion, as a, mm. like, as a, as a set. Uh, James, you got any thoughts on these? Uh, yeah, they're okay. I think, like, as a model kit, they're quite nice. As a unit, for every time I've ever played them in-game, they are painfully underwhelming and never seem to do or achieve anything. Okay. And, like, someone will be like, oh, I'm firing the minigun now. And I'm like, oh, cool, what happens? They're like, oh, nothing. I'm going to fire this giant spike. Oh, it's done two damage. I'm like, oh. Oh, Mm. yeah. Okay. So hang uh, on, has that whole unit shot now? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would like to see them. I mean, it's kind of interesting. Like Dan pointed out, they've got those cutlasses um, and then like the pike. And then they do have some guns and some special weapon guns. But I would like to see them have more of a combat profile. This is, for mm-hmm. me, where they're going to like make or break this army. I think someone in the chat kept asking about it. Like, just give these guys a four up. Or three up armor, like if they're gonna have one wound, give them a three up armor save, right? Or four up with four up with two wounds and give them an extra combat attack. The combat attack can still be like a a slappy little one. It doesn't need to be a huge one, but then you're encouraging people to play to do combat pressure on objectives rather than just shoot off the objective and then walk onto it. Yeah, no, I agree with Gorka Morka. They're the definition of run and sit on an objective or game unit. Like that's what they should do. Mm. They should just set up base camp on an objective and then they should stay mm. there for a long time. And you do have to remember yeah. that there are some units in the game right now that some mash other units. So you gotta have to really work hard to like do that. So yeah, Arkanaut Company. Uh, James, what does, it, what does it say about it? What do these lads say? Uh, they're the backbone of the Caradron air fleets. They're grizzled privateers crew. The sky, oh, these grizzled privateers crew the Skyport's vessels and are armed with a variety of Aether-powered firearms and deck tools with which to repel borders and take the fight to the enemy. Yeah. Yeah, I just want these. This is the this is the problem in the book. Like this unit, this is the problem. Mm. Make this good, make these great. Like this is where. Like as soon as I see these guys war scroll, probably work out whether or not they've done a good job. Yeah, these guys need to be mm. it. Like I arguably want to see lots of Arkanaut Company more than I give a fuck about. Like if they only make one of the three boats good, care. Mm. I, I want Arkanaut Company to work. The only right? the the thing I I don't know anyone in the chat who like me has painted a bunch of them. The only thing I'll say is I actually really dislike painting them because they're like a lot of things. They're very heavily over designed for a battle line unit that you need you need a minimum of thirty of. It's brutal, and but, I'd compare these to the league actually, which I've got right here, the lovely little leagues of Votan. Uh, dudes that they've released, uh, which have like a pouch and maybe a clasp modeled onto them, and then you can put the other stuff on. The thing I found really frustrating, and I still do with painting these, and I'd, I'd almost it's a limiting thing for me wanting to do the army again, is they all have they've got additional tools you can put on them, but every model sculpted on has just so much additional 
like detail that isn't necessary for a battle line unit. Like put that on the dudes, like your more like your Endron riggers, sure. But on these guys, they could have been a little bit more simply designed. They are spectacular models. They look gorgeous. They're fantastic. But uh, if you want to like do slap chop and then like a slap chop and a highlight, you're still going to be there all day. Well, can't you? Couldn't you? Like, I mean, they're kind of like you know, you can base spray. I don't know like something like silver. Pick out a color. And then, like, mm. you're most of the way done. And then if you ever want to go back, like, because I can look at the models now, there's a load of gems, there's loads of, like, runes, mm. there's loads of stuff. It feels like this is one of those, you could get it on the table very quickly, and then you mm. can, like, over the course of, like, a thousand years, make them look a load better. I think yeah. it would, be, it would they, be the trick. They, once they're done, they look spectacular because they've got lots of different textures and shapes, like, that are cut by all those straps and everything. But the process of getting them there takes forever. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, like so. This is this is it for me. This is where everything needs to work, in my personal mm -hmm. opinion. Like, uh, we need to see Arcanaut Company doing the job. Uh, Make them swashbucklers. They should be cool, like piratey, freaking like sw swashbucklers, like shooting you in the face in combat and like parrying with their swords. Make them that. No, I agree. I agree. All right. So uh, then we get onto the uh, the Thunderers. So these are more mm. your elite kind of like five man unit yep. of like heavy weapon experts um, with all with different weapons, um, like which is kind of like an awkward like kit, like or I mean, all with the shotgun rifle. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, all with a shotgun rifle. Uh, James, what does it say about the 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 Thunderers? And my kind of follow up question is. Um, He's like, why don't they just make this so, like, this is an upgrade kit to an Arcanaut company? So, like, you can have mm. a Thunderer attached to an Arcanaut company. Take one of the special Ooh, guns. Cool. Do you know what I mean? Like a weapons team. Anyway, yeah. they won't do that, but that's a fun idea. What are you saying, James? What do they say about Thunderers? Big Runstock Thunderers are heavily armored Marines, say four up, mm. employed by the air fleets to defend it from hostiles. Expert marksmen and battle hardened veterans four up safe of many voyages <laughs> they Is obliterate that... their foes wounds on fours in a storm of aether shot and mortar rounds <laughs> they literally hit all wound on fours and have a four up save you're not they, a fan. They, for all of that extra armor look at how much more armor they have than an arcanaut they have the same save yeah, that's pretty rubbish. Yeah, I mean, Does they're more... very cheap for points wise, but thanks, thanks for thanks for um, uh, thanks for uh, resubscribing. Um, yeah, the, yeah. I mean, there's already a lot of dissonance between them. I mean, the dude with the the banner on his back is magnificent. That looks great. Mm. Um, well, I don't know what you would want these to be. I guess, guess like just make it so the Arcanauts don't shoot very well at all. Make it so they fight really well. And then make these be your dedicated singular shooting unit of the mm -hmm. of the kind of your four dudes, right? Yeah, and the also, look, I mean, look at the size of their guns. They are vast. And then, like, I look at this war squad, I'm like, oh, hits on three, oh, wounds on four, oh, hits on three, oh, wounds on four, oh, hits on three, oh, wounds on four. I'm like, oh, no, these guys hit on four, four, and four. There is one guy with one shot that wounds on mm. a two. He hits on a four. He yeah. wounds on a two, he's minus two, he's D3 damage. So he hits on a four. Expert marksman. <laughs> four. Like, I... what's, what's really fucked about these guys as well is when you look at them. Because are they a wound each? Two. Two wounds okay. each. But like, when you look at these guys and you think about other shooting units in this class, I mean, it is an older book. And like I said, the second edition book was really just copy-paste from the first edition book in many ways. So like, you're looking at, like, this is a book that's got the most opportunity to be amazing. Uh, but yeah, like uh, Simon in the chat was saying, like, look at the leader. His gun should, like, you should just stare down a Varangard and that gun should just take them out. Like, it should, think... like it's a huge shotgun. What I okay. love... What I'd love to see from them is that, like we said, I'd love the Arcanauts to be a little bit more balanced, leaning more towards combat and holding things like swashbuckling. I would love these to be your Delta squad. So like really high points, very expensive, but these should be the shooters. They deploy from a boat. They fucking take off something specific that they look at. Like they're highly tactical. Uh, 
and they just remove, you know, like it's like you put them on the board and they remove it, but they're so, there's a few of them and they're super glassy and very easy to take out in return. So it's about like, they are specific application of force, you know, like put them down. They're going to freaking take off a unit of Varangard in a heartbeat, but they're wrecked afterwards, you know, like they're your, your assassins almost. That's what I'd love them to be. Cause I think that would be a lot more interesting, um, like in in the vast like shifting of the whole thing also you also, can't you can't oh go on james you go no 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 you go first no i want to hear your bit well i'm just gonna rant so you go first <laughs> well just my bit is like i i don't know i don't understand why you're in a game where they make long strikes um bow snakes uh reavers uh mm. you know um and obviously sentinels why they're there or even cruel boys and the bolts from them and then you look at these guys and like their job is clearly only to shoot like also if i'm going to like build like this amazing like bit of like it looks like that did not take five minutes to build that gun right i'm not yeah. gonna build a gun right that is way way worse than some elf bow like, I'd just like to point out, though, right? So you've yeah. built the gun. Yeah. You're an expert marksman with thousands of battles behind you. Yeah. But when you shoot, you've probably got a 50% chance of hitting. Yeah. And you I'd are like no to point better than an Arcanaut. That, that Larry, who's the guy on the, the right-hand side with the giant cannon. <laughs> yeah? He's got a giant cannon. He and does. I'm I was I, looking at the I barrel of that gun. It's huge. Right? I don't know which weapon's which, but he, in my head, is holding an Aether cannon. Yeah. So he's got a weapon crafted from Aether by the richest people in the world. He's an <laughs> expert marksman yep. with thousands of battle behind him. 50% chance to hit. What range is it? And 12-inch range. He's firing a cannon. James, a skink can blow a yeah. dart sixteen inches. Exactly. <laughs> Did you See, know I, that? And that's, but that's. I don't mind them being short range because it means you're, you're not just down. having them sitting right up the back. I just want them to be short range, savagely brutal, so that when you commit them, you need to have a plan about either like I lose them and it's a trade, or I need to do like anyway. I just whatever. There's, there's literally. A guy still fighting in the cities of Sigma using an a literally a rifle, the hot from the rifle. old world, yeah. Which is how what range? Thirty inches. And the guy from basically like living in the Sky Dwarf, his rifle's eighteen inches. <laughs> and you know what's going to be the guy's using a flint musket. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know what's going to be the best is you're now going to be able to ally in through those mercenary companies some dispossessed and you'll have an iron breaker holding his old uh drac gun being like yeah so this predates the existence of the mortal realms uh and it hits on threes wounds on threes <laughs> rend one i can shoot it twice if i don't move uh, and it, it's got a bigger range. And they're like, yeah, well, we're the technology superior race that took the sky. And he's like, yeah, but fucking, like, technologically superior how? <laughs> I love the idea, by the way, someone put it in the chat, where um, if he shoots a drag cannon, the unit has to move back six inches because he's been blown nice. backwards. D6 inches, sorry. That's a cute little idea. <laughs> I love that. But, but I also think, like, you could literally, like, there's a guy with a shotgun. He's going to be close range. There's two guys with rifles. They should probably be able to shoot. I don't know what that other guy's got like a blunderbuss who cares about him he's got a banner that's his job but the guy with a cannon like make him whatever the ogre thing is what's the ogre thing what a lead belt jim can't do oh, that yeah. you, you mean an iron blaster he's an, an iron, iron blaster. blaster you want him to be an iron blaster you want him specifically to be an iron blaster yeah just him all right okay i love that yeah i love uh, that that's good also, this is where they, this is this is the between the arcanaut company and the thunderers that's where they got the most scope right for change uh, yeah, yeah and i've also what? got like they've got what 16 units yeah give me one good guy he the rest can be rubbish make him one of, dumb one of the grunstock thunderers has a chemical flamethrower that like it gets, it's it's just like you've got all these cool things that then you don't use. Well, so eight inch range, so nine, inch, kind of, nine inches. Yeah, yeah. it's kind it's kind of what combat. it's kind of what um uh like a get not to plug 
but the video I did that James never watched uh, about, <laughs> about uh, unit roles and archetypes mm. is when we talked about damage dealers. Like, it's kind of interesting because the the um, this book in of itself is a book that really doesn't understand any unit roles for books, yeah. for units anyway. And none of them, all of them kind of fit in a role and they're all kind of damage dealers, but none of them, like, whereas... Um, like the Saves the Darkness book really understand itself. You know, like the Unmade mm. specifically are a debuff control unit and the Chosen are just a fucking damage unit. Like, yeah. they're not trying to be anything else. They're not trying to do any buffs. Um, and it would be really fun to see the KO have some other units. What's most interesting for me is the Endron Riggers and the Sky Wardens, especially mm -hmm. off the back, especially off the back of seeing the Gossamid Archers um, has been really mm. good. So I love the gossip. Go on. So I just wanted to super quickly throw, because there's a few people asking in the chat, this is based on, what, what we're talking about is based off the current books yeah. uh, and then comparing it to what we're hoping or what we're predicting or suggesting the, the changes would be, could be, should be in the book coming out uh, next week. Next week, week or two. Yeah. So, uh, James, we're going to talk about the Sky Wardens and, just so you can prep the story, Sky Wardens and the Endron Riggers. But effectively, the Endron Riggers are the engineers who fix the boats, and the Sky Wardens mm -hmm. are meant to be, I guess, defending the boats. So they're the Bubble Boys, is what they've uh, been described Let me as. tell you what those Sky Wardens do. Yeah, and also, before we go any further, just a quick point. They, like, they're kind of interesting. It's a Gossamid of five models, but the Sky mm -hmm. Wardens are only three three models so already mm. these these are like a wildly like your comparison i guess is to skyfires and enlightened it's kind of your comparison mm. yeah right because they come in threes as well and they're mounted sorry james what do the what do they You're what fine. does it say yeah uh so the sky wardens are the elite formation of arcanaut warriors granted the power of flight by portable aether endrins <laughs> they swoop from on high to skewer enemies for to hit upon long shafted sky pikes or hover at short range to incinerate them with vulcanizer pistols. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so, uh, Jog in the chat said straight up they need another wound. Um, mm. like, and like you said, James, their story is like that they, these are kind of your elite melee. And it's, they're kind of awkward because you really have to kind of think who are they competing in class with? You know, mm -hmm. like Varangard. I know Varangard sounds like stupid to compare them to Varangard, but like eels. Varangard coming threes, eels coming threes down. That's a great example. Uh, like you know, as I talked about Skyfires and Enlightened. So in class, they're way outclassed by pretty much everything. Um, in class, uh, so it's going to be like, and most of those things that I mentioned are like four wounds, like and the. And the thing about them, when you look at look at the models and you look at their their lore and their background, is that they're supposed to be running in, fighting. They drop sky mines and pull out, so that then their opponent sets off the mines and then they go back in again. They're supposed to be the combat stick, but they they're actually not meant to be like brawlers. They're meant to be glass cannons that are aware of that, and so then they have a huge amount of punch, and then they get out and leave you surrounded by grenades. Yeah, like, that's what I mean. I, like, I, I wouldn't mind them having, like, Gossamid-style rules, right? Like, mm. which would be really fun. Uh, yeah, and, <laughs> and, and people in the chat said they're like Annihilators, like, which, James, mm. I know, like, Annihilators are different, though. Like Dan said, they're brawlers. Like, yep. they, mm. they land and they brawl. Um, whereas these should definitely be more of a... I think these should be a skirmish unit, like a very yeah. offensive skirmish unit. If you catch up with them, they're dead. But yeah. they've got some special rules for they just getting out of combat. also fight worse than the engineers. They do. They do. It's pretty yes, famous. They're all, they're also, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're also um, bad. But, like, give their pikes... Make their pikes like three inch range or something like that. Like you know, like make them massive. Damage Give six. Them... They should also yeah, like... explode. Yeah, they should explode. When one dies, it should explode, right? They should... look at the. They've literally got grenade like mines tethered to their models. Yeah, they should explode. Like, they should like, definitely. Which explode. they they are, and I will say there are rules for using them. They're just shit. Like <laughs> they're just they they don't work very well. Yeah, and then finally the engine riggers uh, in here. Um, so these are the other versions um, that you buy, buy, build from the kit, and these are better in combat, and they're better at generally everything else, and they help boats out. So, James? Mm. Uh, so with Aether Endrin strapped to their backs, 
engine riggers conduct repairs on their beloved airships miles above ground. In battle, their aether-powered tools become lethal weapons capable of punching through armor or messily soaring off limbs. So, so literally in the description, they're like, the other guys are like specialist fighters with great gear. And this guy's got the saw he fixes a boat with. And it's better. <laughs> it's better. And he's better. He's, he's better. better. He's got the same save, the same wounds. He does minus two rend instead of minus one. He hits and wounds better. Yes, mm. it's, it's pretty. It's pretty savage, right? And and the saw has historically been better in both books. But what I'd love to see these be is a buff piece, like like not just because at the moment all they really do is heal boats for a wound or two depending on on what's going on. Um, I would love to see these be a buff piece. Like if they're near a boat, it gets to heal, or maybe it's got a DPR, or they they have advantages to hit, move, do something like that. Um, Like, you know, make them a a support piece rather than what they are right now, which is your combat piece. Like the healing is, nobody takes these to heal their boats. Everyone takes these for the fucking sore on their arm. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah, Ender Riggers are, are an interesting place. Um, I would like to see these be different and not what they are. Okay, well, that's uh, that's all of the units. Uh, we haven't <laughs> talked about Drekki. Yeah, and I'm not talking about Drekki or want to be involved with Drekki. Um, so our hopes and dreams are that we, they just recognize that they need some different... They need some different things for the KO. Mm. I mean, again, their narrative is just the the one. Like... I mean, yeah. why don't they? De- why don't they have stuff where they're nicking artifacts? I don't even know. Like, I want more pirating goodness out yeah. of them. I want more pirates. I mean, I know Games Workshop hate pirates. Um, uh... <laughs> <laughs> watermark. Yeah, watermark. Yeah, content creator. Um, uh, but we'll see. Like, I mean, it's got the scope to be wildly evocative, narratively, oh, yeah. right? I would say. I, I think that, honestly, the I know that it's really easy to say this, but I think that the book is going to either be the same of what we already had, which is confusing, clunky, and like, okay, but sort of like a fart under a bed sheet in that you're not sure if it's good or bad, and then you lift it up or you move and you get a waff and you're like, oh, whoa, that was rough. Uh, or it, it could be, like, I'm excited that it maybe it's been put in some really good hands, and maybe we're going to get an awesome battle tome out of it, like what uh, what I, of my opinion, is like the Ogremore tribes or the the um, uh, gits, like just really interesting battle tomes with a lot of versatility and a lot of interest. Yeah, like like I love the gits book, like where if you just be sick on someone with a like a full water trogoth, they just they've got no save. Like I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's good. Yeah, or Sylvaneth. Sylvaneth have got a lot of scope. Uh, as a book so yeah it's, it's got probably the most option and also like this isn't this is the other thing as well this is like one of their is it one of like like deepkin who got a lot mm. of stuff in their book update mm. like like deepkin this is an age of sigmar army this is not yeah. like there are demons in all of the different game systems mm. here's some demon stuff this is uniquely age of sigmar like yeah so like uh thank you mephiston for resubscribing like this is uniquely age of sigma so i really want them to because like if i had like if i had the choice like i wouldn't be like letting city sigma get a fucking whiff of the tabletop and instead i'd be pushing for hard for my new boys mm. right i'd want people hype to be playing carriage and overlords because they're the most age of sigma they're not the most age of sigma but they're only in age of sigma they're not in any other universe so make mm. them really big. That's what I'm gonna say. Anyway, uh, James, you got any plans this week? Uh, not a huge amount. Not a huge amount. Okay. I am afraid. Right, How about you? Fine. No hobby. Oh, me. Oh, um, uh, quite a lot of stuff actually. I'm working on. Uh, I've just finished a video on top ten sharpshooters, which is really fun. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. doing an interview about fire slayers later today because fire slayers are really good in the game at the minute. Like so hot right now. Crazy good. Uh, so I'm doing an interview on that. Uh, then uh, I'm finishing off my castle video. So l- earlier in last year, I was away um, in uh, Pennsylvania at uh, Castle Con, uh, which the Tough Cloud organized. And I'm going to finally finish off my fucking uh, edit on that this week. So that's my job. Uh, and then if I get time, if I get time, I'm going to put some ogres on some bases. That's my dream. 
Uh, what about you, Dan? Uh, I've got a new uh, playing a little D and D later this week, which I'm you know excited about. I love me a bit of uh, RPG. It's good fun. Uh, painting some stuff and uh, continuing to uh, paint while on Zoom meetings. That's, I'm, <laughs> I'm currently I'm living that Zoom meeting life. Uh, love it. It's great. Absolutely love it. All right. Okay. Well, chat. I hope you've had a great time. Thanks everyone for donating gift subs. Uh, if you've been listening yeah, to the podcast, Jesus. Pod- I know. Insane. Absolutely insane. It was uh, dwarves. It was dwarves did it. It was dwarves the dwarves did it. That Fuck did elves. It. Uh, so we will talk about the new book next week when obviously all the rules have been out uh, or if they're out. Um, uh, a special shout out to uh, everyone who supports the show. If you listen to podcasts, stay hydrated. Uh, and thank you to everyone who listens to this, uh, like on YouTube, like like comment and subscribe. And then finally. Thanks to everyone on Patreon who supports the show. You're all superstars. Uh, hope you have a great weekend. Um, and then, uh, oh, shout outs. James, you want to shout anyone out? Uh, I'm going to sa- shout out Ewan because I received a million photos of him on the weekend uh, because Ewan. Speckles played him at Warhammer World and he was trying to make me jelly. Just to get you in the loop, Dan, Ewan is our club president, El, El Presidente. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, and he went Would you, is he the, the magnate? <laughs> He's a he's a fucking weapon, is what he is. Yeah. <laughs> if he's a so he's not an admiral. I just I just want to know like what level he is, like admiral, magnate. Uh, like oh, he's he is. above. He's above all of them. Yeah, okay, that's right. true. Yeah. He's basically cool. like god level. He's in the he's gash the, morale. He's the ship. Yeah, he's the boat. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's an that. ironclad. Yeah, he's yeah, an yeah, ironclad. He's like the admiral. Yeah. Okay. Got. Gotcha. Yeah. Good. Good <laughs> what about you? Any shout outs for you, Dan? Uh, yeah, I'm going to shout out uh, good mate Darren for digging my car out of a snow drift and helping me push it up a hill in the snow at uh, 2 a.m. in the morning the oh, other day. Oh, good guy. Um, good guy. Yeah, yeah. What a ledge. Total ledge. What a ledge. What a ledge. I'm going to shout out the guy that today at the Cherokee Open went 5-0 with Gits, uh, but then like in the, was in the chat today and he went, last year, 1-4. This year, no, sorry, not Cherry Open, Warhammer World. He was like, last year, 1 4 with my gits. This year, 5 0 bitches. Can't even nerf me. Like, he was like, he's like been playing them the whole time. And he, <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like taking people's toys off. And they were like, I reckon the gits are too good. And he was like, fuck you. You never said anything when I was a 1 4. So you don't deserve yeah, to say yeah. anything when I'm at my 5 0. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you can't love me at my 1 4, you don't deserve me at my 5 0. <laughs> well, that's, but that's gits for me. Gits and underguts, like a uh, gut bust same thing they were both the people that were playing were stands that loved them and they were shit for so long and now that they're good fuck off and let them have it it's yes. not like they're they're daughters of Cain that have just been pushing poo in since day the first word in the first book five five months two weeks that's what they've got they've, they've got time thanks everyone for tuning into the show look after yourself stay well loads of love thanks bye bye